Assalamu alaikum. My name is Reina. I am nine and a half, and my hobbies are I'm artistic, I love to cook, and I like to do, I like to be outdoors. If I would want to be an animal, that would definitely be a cat because they're really nice and furry, and I love the way they are. Assalamu alaikum, little kids. My name is Ahsan. And my three favorite hobbies is knitting, sewing clothes for my sister's dolls, and baking. Hello, my name is Nuri. And I'm Sarah. I'm nine years old. And I'm also nine years old. <laughs> my favorite hobbies are reading, writing, and playing Roblox. Mine's watching TV, gymnastics, and writing. Um, if I were any animal in the world, I'd be a cheetah so I could do things fast. I'd be an eagle because they don't hurt people, because people don't kill them. Bye. This is Omar Eagle. My name is Omar U-M-A-R. <clears throat> I'm 10 years old. My favorite three hobbies are gaming, soccer, and basketball. If I was, if I would be, if, if I would be any animal in the whole world, I would be a cheetah. I like being fast. Awesome, like them, little kids. My name is Yusuf. My favorite three hobbies are one is fishing, and my second is playing basketball, and my third is skiing. Skiing. And uh, if I could be any animal in the world, I I would be a fish. Because fish, I I like fish. Assalamu alaikum, new kids. My name is Afifa, and I'm from Chicago, USA. I'm 10 years old, and three of my hobbies would be reading, sleeping, and baking. I, if I could choose any animal, I would choose to be a cat because they're adorable and friendly. Assalamu alaikum, new kids. My name is Leila. I live in Brea, California, United States. I'm eight years old. My three favorite hobbies are soccer, jump rope, and dancing. If I were an animal in the world, I'd be a tiger. They can blend in into their habitat. They can easily catch their prey. Assalamu alaikum, Noor kids. Assalamu alaikum, Noor kids. My name is Alina and I'm 10 years old. Um, my three favorite hobbies are reading, writing, and playing with my cat, Kira. If I were, an, if I could be any animal in the world, I would be a cat because I can sleep whenever I want. Assalamu alaikum, little kids. Assalamu alaikum. My Mommy. name is Ikra. I'm yeah. six and a half. Mommy. My favorite hobbies are reading the Quran, helping my family cook, being with my family, also take care of my baby sister. Assalamu alaikum, little kids. My name is Ruha. I'm 13 years old and I'm from UK, but I'm currently living in Pakistan. My three favorite hobbies are I love to sing, I love to read, and I love to travel. If I could be any animal, it would be a cat or a horse. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, little kids. My name is Anaya. I'm 11 years old. I live in Lahore, Pakistan. My three favorite hobbies are gymnastics, soccer, and, and reading. If I were any animal in the world, I would be a cat. Assalamu alaikum. I am mm. yeah, yeah, I am seven years old and mm. from London. Assalamu alaikum, Noor kids. My name is Anaya and I'm 10 years old. I'm from Pakistan and I'm currently living in Dubai. My favorite hobbies are swimming, arts and crafts, and English story writing. If I was any animal in this world, then I would be either a cat or a dolphin. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, Noor kids. My name is Roy and I'm seven years old. If I was an animal, I would be a cat because they're my favorite animal. Hi, welcome to our kids. My name is Alicia and I'm 12 years old and I live in Brisbane, Australia. My three favorite hobbies are reading, drawing, and spending time with my friends. Um, if I could be any animal, I would be a cat because they're very majestic, smart, and they will Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam's favorite animal. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Ashaz. I am from India. Wish you a very happy Ramadan Mubarak. 
May this Ramadan bring joy, happiness and wealth to you. Ramadan Mubarak. May Allah listen to all of your prayers and grant you forgiveness. May this year's Ramadan become a good memory for you. Ramadan Mubarak. Thank you. My name is Muhammad. And my name is Muhammad. We live in California. And we are both twins and we are also nine years old. My three favorite hobbies are playing geometry dash, reading, and eating. Yeah, my top hobbies, my top three, are also playing geometry dash, editing Hungry Dolphin, and reading and art is my third favorite hobby. My name is Sarah, and I'm seven years old. My two favorite hobbies, Three. painting, uh, playing with my little brother. Who is this little brother? <laughs> and, oh, and doing arts. And if you were any animal, what would you be? And if I was an, any animal, I would be a traveler because... Because they're super fast. Assalamu alaikum, Noor kids. My name is Hamda. I am 10 years old. My three hobbies are baking, gymnastics, and art. If I could be any animal in the world, I would be a cat because they are very cute and they are active. Assalamu alaikum. My name my name is Zahra, and I'm from Cincinnati. Uh, my favorite color is pink, and and my favorite best friend is 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 Efra, and I like Hiba, and I like my other friend named Lena. Assalamu alaikum, girls. Waalaikumsalam. Can you tell me your names? My name is Nisreen. And how old are you? Bye. I'm Yasmin. I'm 13. I'm Hola, and I'm nine. And Hola, what kind of animal would you like to be? I like to be. I would like to be a koala because it's my favorite. I would like to be a cheetah because it's also my favorite animal. And did you know that cheetahs are the fastest land animal, reaching speeds of 40. A 64 miles per hour in three seconds. SubhanAllah. Nisreen, what's your favorite animal? A lion. Because I want to bite people. <laughs> How about what are your favorite hobbies? My favorite hobbies, I like to do arts and crafts, mm. and I like to spend time with my siblings, especially my baby sister. And I also like to be being out of the house. How about you, Yasmin? Well, <laughs> I like doing gymnastics. I like doing math. And I also like reading. And Nisri, what about you? I like to color. And I like to draw. And I like to do things at school. Masha Allah. Assalamu alaikum, Norkid. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, My name is Hiba and I am 11 years old. My three hobbies are to paint, to draw, and to bake. If I could be any animal in the world, it would be a lioness because they are very strong. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Abdullah and I am 9 years old. My three hobbies is making Legos, riding a bike, and sketching. And my my and what I would be is a bird because they can fly. Alafiz. Assalamu alaikum, your kids. My name is Hania and I am 11 years old. Three favorite hobbies are reading, writing, and of course, chasing my little little sister who was Sara and the little brother Hamza because I'm the oldest. So they do not get into any into trouble and do not break things all around the house. If I were any animal, I would be an owl because they're super silent. Uh, hi, my name is Rian. 
I like Spider-Man, Lamborghinis, elephants, all types of kids. But I can't do all, so that's okay. And I'm six years old. Are you ready to become a Quran legend? Today, we are going to be crowning three winners of the first ever Noor Kids Quran Showcase. But before that, we're going to be learning about role models. If you're with me, let's... No, not a green slip. I am seven years old. It's a Monday morning, and the principal has just called me in to her office. Let me explain. On Sunday nights before Monday, me and my family would watch the Minnesota Vikings every single week. It was my favorite. I'd be able to see Dante Culpepper and Randy Moss and Chris Carter. They were the football team here in Minnesota, and I loved them. In fact, Chris Carter, my role model, he was so important to me that I'd write the number 80 on the back of all of my shirts because that was his number. Well, on Monday when we got to school and our teacher, Miss Ragazzino, wasn't in the, in the room, me and my friends decided we would play some of the games that we saw the night before. Now, I knew we probably shouldn't have done it, but I didn't think it was going to be a problem. I took the football. I said, hut, hut. I went back. I looked for my friend Aaron. I threw the ball up. But as the ball was up in the air, my teacher, Miss Ragazzino, came in the room. And right as she walked in, pow, it hit her straight in the forehead. She looked at me and she said, Amin Azar, principal's office right now. I remember walking in there worried, afraid, and scared. And it was tough. Now, the reason why I am telling you this is because this story is something that each of us has probably experienced when we followed the wrong role model. You and I have people that we look up to. Maybe it's a professional athlete. Maybe it's a teacher at school. Maybe it's a mom or a dad. But role models, the people who we look and see and try to be like, they influence our actions. And that is exactly what we are going to be talking about today. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. My name is Amin Asr, and thank you so much for joining me for the uh, for our program tonight. And we've got a whole bunch of people here. Let's see who we've got. Uh, as I'm looking over here, I see Hayat from Canada. I see Sumeya and Zainab. I see Aliza from Texas. Ilham from California with the biggest smile. Miriam from Wisconsin. Ahila from England, UK. Wania from Louisiana. Humera from Saudi Arabia. We've got a lot of people here today. And today I am really excited because we are going to be doing our first ever Quran showcase. But before we do, we have to answer a really important question. I would say a big thing. Mm -hmm. If we have a Quran, why do we need prophets? In order for us to answer that question, we're going to mosey on over to the library, or some like to say, La Biblioteca, where we're going to be reading a book. Let's go. Ah, 
I'm out of breath. This tree house that we're in is so big that sometimes when I go from one room to the other, I'm just winded. Okay, now look, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, before we actually start the program today, I want to recognize our sponsor for the evening. Our sponsor this evening is Guidance Residential. Now, on our program today, you will notice that there is a QR code that's gonna be floating around. It's a little bit of a secret QR code. If you scan it, it's gonna actually take you to this specific website. And if you put in your information, like I am doing right now, um, it's gonna unlock some special things that you will be able to uh, take advantage of. I want nobody to look at that phone number. Nobody. Do not look at that phone number and do not text me. Okay, anyways. So when you're actually in here, what you're going to see is that inside there is a bunch of really fun things that um, you can print out and benefit from, including um, a puzzle and a word search and um, uh, information. It's really cool. It's all related to Ramadan and you'll even see the Nora Kids characters in here. But over here there's a finance guide that's specifically for moms and dads. Many of our moms and dads are likely looking to buy houses at some point, especially as our, as our families are growing. And Guidance is the number one provider of halal mortgages in the entire country. And we're really blessed because today they're helping sponsor the program. And so take advantage of this and we'll talk more about them, inshallah, as the night continues. Now, with that said, we are going to be reading a book tonight. Uh, and uh, that book is called Mercy to Mankind. Uh, but before we start... So tonight's book is called Mercy to Mankind. But before we start, I need everyone to say Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. On the count of three. One, two, three. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Some of you guys said it really loud. I could like hear you from Minnesota, but some of you guys were just like whispering. Anyways, let's be Oh! I see the code. It's right down there. You can scan it. Okay. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. And I have to take a breath as well. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. I love this story. An excellent example. Hasib picks up Amin after school. Assalamu alaikum, says Amin from outside Hasib's car. Wa alaikum salam, says Hasib. Oh, says Amin as he looks at the back. There's a gift. Is that for me? No, little brother, says Hasib. Then who is it for? Don't you know what Sunday is? Asks Hasib. Um, two months before baseball season? It's Mother's Day! What? Already? I mean, it's the same time every single year, says his older brother. I mean's feeling stressed out. I don't have a gift to give mom. The brothers arrive at home. Hey, I know what I can do. I'll make a special Mother's Day breakfast for mom. She loves chocolate chip pancakes. Do you even know how to make chocolate chip pancakes, bro? Says his older brother. How hard can it be? Well, don't say I didn't warn you, says the older brother. All I need is a recipe. Pause. Full screen. Yesterday, we read a book, and we said the Quran is like a recipe book, right? The Qur'an is a book that shows us how to live our lives. Is a recipe enough? Well, let's read on and find out. All I need is a recipe. I'm sure mom has it in her cookbook, says Amin. Amin goes into the kitchen. Now, where is that cookbook? Aha! Uh -huh. There it is. It's at the top. It's like... This thing is heavy. Ouch! But still a win. He's holding it. Allahu Akbar. The next day, while mom and dad are shopping, Amin practices making the pancakes. All right. 
I've got all-purpose flour, I've got baking powder, I've got salt, I've got sugar, check. Milk, eggs, butter, check. Oil for frying, check. And most importantly, chocolate chips, check. Ooh, chocolate chips. Step one, add the flour, baking soda, salt, and sugar. Easy enough. Hmm, it says add a pinch of salt. I don't know what a pinch is, but I know what a pint is. A pint of salt should be fine. He puts it in. Amin finishes mixing the batter. Now the recipe says lightly oil the frying pan. Lightly oil? That's not very specific, says Amin. It's light yellow now. That should be fine. Look at all the oil he dumps in there. Allahu Akbar, you guys, that's not what lightly oil means. The recipe says to turn the stove to medium high. But what does medium high mean? Is it medium or high? High it is, says Amin as he turns up the stove. Oh no, oh no. What's gonna happen? The stove is too high and there's too much oil. It catches on fire. Ah, astaghfirullah, says Amin. Amin grabs the fire extinguisher. Take that. Alhamdulillah. Hasib rushes in to help. Don't worry, I have it under control, says Amin. Hasib comes and help. Hey, why did you do that? Oh, by the way, look, he's got fire on his hat. <laughs> so much for being under control. Hey, why did you do that? Your hat was on fire, says Hasib. Hasib looks around the kitchen. What happened here? I was practicing the pancake recipe, but I ran into some problems, says Amin. Amin tastes the pancake. Let's see how it tastes. Amin, Amin, don't. Do not touch that pancake. A'udhu billahi min shaitanir rajeem Oh my! Ah, burnt, too salty, and foamy. I'll help you clean this up, says his older brother. Hasib and Amin clean the kitchen. I'm so sorry about that mess and the fire. At least you're safe and nothing was damaged, says Hasib. I want everyone to pay attention. This part's the important part. I followed the recipe, but it was hard to understand. What is a pinch of salt? What is light oil? I know just what you need, says Hasib. What's that, says Amin. The recipe is important, but you also need an example. An example, says Amin? Sure. Even in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the Qur'an, which teaches us what to do. But he also gave us a perfect example in Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to show us how to do it. What? Yesterday we talked about how the Qur'an is like a recipe book. The Qur'an is a manual that shows us how to live our lives. And that's good. But we just saw in the story today that if you only follow the recipe but don't have a guide or an example to show you how to do it, you can make mistakes. Let's read on. Amin watches a video of Chef Boyette cooking chocolate chip pancakes. Ah, a pinch is a lot less than a pint. On Mother's Day, Amin follows Chef Boyette's example. Masha Allah, thank you so much, Amin, says Mom. You're welcome, Mom, says Amin. Hey, where are the pancakes, says Dad. Um, you'll have to wait until Father's Day, says Amin. These are delicious. How did you learn to make pancakes? Then he says, well, with the, right example, with the right book and the right example, you can do anything. Hasib asks, who used up all the salt? 
Amin responds, Oops! That was me. All right, you guys, here's the thing. In this story, it talks about the importance of role models, a guide. Because whether we realize it or not, the way we are as human beings, when we see other people who are doing amazing things, it sets an example for us, and we want to start to copy them. I remember when I was a little kid, I used to love uh, the number 13. And I loved the number 13 because I had a friend named Muhammad who was 13 years old. And you probably have someone who you look up to right now. Now, of course, our Lord Allah gave us our Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But outside of that, he's also given us brothers and sisters in our faith. And it's with that that I'm excited to talk about the Qur'an showcase tonight. Look, I know that each of you is on a different journey with the Qur'an. Maybe you're just starting right now. Maybe you don't know how to learn Arabic and you're thinking about learning Arabic. Maybe you've memorized the whole Qur'an. Every person is at a different place. So today, our goal is to show you guides. Our goal is to show you role models, not just of adults, but also of kids your age who have mastered and are building a loving relationship with the Qur'an. And along with that, we're going to be giving away some cash prizes to some of the winners. So without any further ado, the moment we've been waiting for. I'm gonna head on over to the laboratory where we're gonna start our first ever Kids Quran Showcase. This Muslim treehouse of ours is large. And so running from one side to the other side, I mean, look, I'm, I'm an old man at this point in time, and a guy like me can get a little bit tired and winded after uh, such a long walk. Now, today we are being joined by two guest speakers. Uh, and we actually have them with us. Allahu Akbar, they're here right now. We have first Qari Noman Hussein. So Qari Noman Hussein is right up here. Okay, Gary Noman, he lives in Chicago, Illinois, unless that changed recently. I don't think it changed recently. I think he's still in Chicago. But now he is also the associate director and a faculty member at Cullum Seminary, at the Cullum Institute, which is an organization that we really love in Dallas. He memorized the Quran, and after that, he went to South Africa, where he learned more about Islamic studies. Not only does he have, uh, did he graduate at the top of his class, he's an expert in Tajweed and also the 10 different types of recitation in the Arabic language. Assalamu alaikum, Kari Nomam. Welcome to our program. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. How are you doing, Brother Amin? Oh man, alhamdulillah, I am doing better than you would know, mashallah. Today is a special day. You know, every time I talk to Imam Mustafa, he'll say, you know, Amin, the Qur'an is the best. And I'll say, really? Actually, you know what? I'll let him say it. Let me first introduce Imam, uh, uh, um, uh, Imam Mustafa Khattab. Uh, he is a dear friend of mine. The way that we first met is he told me about a project that he was working on called the Clear Quran for Kids. And when he initially talked to me about it, I said, okay, this is going to be interesting. Sure, sure, sure. Fast forward. We have every one of the volumes in our home. And the Clear Quran has literally, I think, taken over the world. 
even in October and November, as people began learning more about Islam, they did it through picking up a translation. And more often than not, it was a translation that Imam Mustafa Khattab created. He is a graduate from Al-Azhar University. Without any further ado, allow us to welcome Imam Mustafa to the program. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh. Alaikum salam, rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah, I'm doing good. Imam Mustafa, I can't hear you very well. Can you hear me now? It's, yeah, it's better. Yeah, it was like a Verizon commercial. Okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Imam Mustafa, how are you doing? And you're globe trotting right now, right? You're, you're going all across the country? Yes, I'm touring the US and Canada to promote the clear Quran, alhamdulillah. MashaAllah. Now you told me something, and you tell me every time we meet that the Qur'an is the best book. Why is the Qur'an the best book? Because it's the word of Allah. Mm. As simple as that. You know, Imam Mustafa, it is the word of Allah. SubhanAllah, and that is enough. But it was revealed to the best prophet during the best month, on the best night, to the best ummah. And it was translated by the best man. Mashallah. I mean, right? That's, you know. So, alhamdulillah, um, it, it, there's a lot to love about the Quran. So now, I want to tell you about our plan for the evening, okay? We put forward a challenge to the students that are in our Ramadan camp for kids. And we put three different categories, okay? There's the juniors category for kids six and younger. There is the inventors category for 7 to 11, and then there is a professors category for ages 12 and up. Each one had a different uh, verse of the Quran that we asked them to recite. We had over 590 submissions, okay? Wow. So Cameron Zargar, uh, who is part of our treehouse, he went through all of them. He, he picked his top 32. After that, we gave it to another person on our team. Her name is Hafidha Anam Mansoor. She's someone who has judged countless Quran competitions. She teaches uh, Tajweed, and she narrowed it down to the top three in each of these categories. Now, Kari Noman, you, and Imam Mustafa, you, are going to be listening to the finalists, and you guys are going to be deciding who is the winner in each of the categories. You ready? Sounds good. All right, Let's very good. So the first category is the juniors category. Now in the juniors category, we had 89 kids who participated. We asked them to do Surah Al-Hashr, the 22nd through 24th ayah. Now Kari Noman, if I can put you on the spot, would you feel comfortable reciting this for us? Sure, inshallah. <clears throat> أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو عالم الغيب والشهادة هو الرحمن الرحيم هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله عما يشركون هو الله الخالق البارئ المصور له الأسماء الحسنى يسبح له ما في السماوات والأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم ما شاء الله ما شاء الله One of the reasons why I was so happy that Gari uh, Noman you're here with us today is one of my goals is to provide role models to our kids. And what you just shared was beautiful. These are the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recited in such a beautiful way. Um, Imam Mustafa, I'm not going to ask you to tell me about the translation completely, but I will ask you, these verses in the Quran that Gari Noman just recited, 
why are these verses so interesting and important? Uh, the verses at the end of Surah Hashr, they are unique because they have more names of Allah than any other ayah in the Quran. Um, so there are so many names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that are mentioned at these ayat. And also, there are some of my favorite ayat in the Quran. So when I'm invited to one of the masajid, um, I like to recite them uh, for a good reason. So... And this is part of the wisdom of the Imam. When you are about to lead the Salah, I take a look at the audience behind me because it's not my community, I'm a guest. Uh, so if the majority of the people are Arab, I choose any difficult surah or difficult ayat to recite because I know that they're going to understand the ayat. But if they don't know the Arabic language or they come from non-Arab countries, I choose uh, verses or surahs that they are likely going to understand the meaning of. And for example, uh, short surahs at the end, or ayah kursi, or the last ayat of surah Baqarah, or the ayat of surah Hashr, the one that we have, the ayat we have here, because they mention the names of Allah. So once you hear Al Malik Al Quddus Al Salam, so they know what is happening here, and this is part of connecting with the people behind you, behind me when I pray. I love it. Jazakumullah khairan. Thank you. Okay, so with that background, we're now going to first listen to Muhammad. Muhammad is uh, ages six and younger, and I want, I want you guys all to realize this, okay, uh, for everyone who's watching. My daughter is six. You might be older than six. You've probably forgot when you were six, okay? I am so proud of these young um, uh, students of ours because um, th these ayah that we asked them to recite are frankly not easy. We probably could have asked them to recite something a little bit easier, um, and I think they put forward a really, really good effort. So let's listen to the first one. And by the way, Karin Oman and uh, Imam Mustafa, I want you guys to like, you know, take some notes. I'll ask one of you for a little bit of thoughts on the recitation. We're going to go through the three, and then the two of you guys are going to decide which one you like the most. Let's do it. والله الذي لا إله إلا هو عالم الغيب والشهادة هو الرحمن الرحيم هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو الملك القدوس السلام مؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله عما يشركون هو الله الخالق البارئ المتصور له السماء الحسنى يسبح له ما في السماوات والأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم ما شاء الله ما شاء الله ما شاء الله uh, Kari Noman, I'm going to go to you on this one uh, What did you like about his recitation and what advice would you give him in terms of how to improve? So I am a fan of his overall flow, right? And one of the parts of learning to read the Quran is to working on that flow. Sometimes we can read letters properly, but when we connect them, it gets a little challenging. So what I really liked about the first contestant is that it flowed. There were some mistakes here and there, which is something that we all make, but definitely uh, in my notes, I wrote overall great reading, and some mistakes and so if he can you know work on just making it a little bit more fluent he'll be amazing inshallah and i bet if he just continues maybe reading a little bit every day even a page every day just doing it consistently out loud mm -hmm. um, will probably be a really good um, plan for success of course i love it okay very good we're gonna go to the next uh the next person Assalamu alaikum. My name is Ismail. Today I'm going to be reciting Surah Al-Hajr. 
أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو الملك الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله عما يشكون هو الله الخالق البارئ المصور له الأسماء الحسنى يسبح له ما في السماوات والأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم السلام عليكم Imam Mustafa, commentary on this one. What did you like? What do you think could be improved? Inshallah, he has a good voice. And inshallah, he has the potential to be a good Qari, inshallah, Imam Al-Haram, bi oh. uh, So what he needs to work on, the speed. He's too fast. Uh, to the point that he missed the first ayah completely. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so take it, take it, you know, take your time, take it easy. Uh, alhamdulillah, and inshallah, uh, you're going to do a good job. So, but take your time. There is no rush. Inshallah. I love that. My uh, my Quran teacher. So, you know, especially when you're a kid, sometimes there's a feeling of if you recite fast, that means you recite good. And so, me and my friends sometimes would have competitions, see who could recite the fast. And then my teacher would say, "Do you have a train that you're waiting for? What is there a train that's coming? Come on, man, slow down a little bit." But, mashallah. All right, let's go to the last one. Assalamu alaikum, Noor Kids. My name is Dawood, and I am six years old, and I'm going to recite to the Hashar. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim. Bismillahi r-Rahmani r-Rahim. Huwa Allahu al-nadhi la ilaha illa hu. Alimu al-ghaybi wa shahada. Huwa al-Rahmani r-Rahim. Huwa al-Rahmani r-Rahim. هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيم العزيز الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله عما يفسكون هو الله الخالق الباد المصور له أسماء الحسنى يسبح له ما في السماوات والأرض all right, Gari Noman, commentary on this one. So Dawood had a beautiful voice, and I felt that there was some, you know, passion in his recitation. He gave it, you know, his all, and he was using his voice to, you know, use, you know, uh, connect with the listener. So I think that was amazing. There was parts of it where he started to go a little fast, and because of going a little fast making some mistakes. And so as Imam Mustafa mentioned, it's so important that we slow down because when we slow down, it's easier for us to read correctly. And frankly, it's more fun. It's kind of like the way I think about it, you know, when you've got like a really nice chocolate, for me, it's like a Kit Kat. I don't want to just eat the whole thing. I want to take small little bites and like, you know, savor it, right? Okay, so now um, Gari Noman and Imam Mustafa we're going to give you two minutes individually. You know, you've heard the three of them. I want you to be thinking about who you would like to crown. We're going to be coming to you for your decision. While you are doing that, we're going to take a quick break. And there's a video uh, from our sponsor tonight, Guidance. Guidance Residential, like we mentioned, it's a mortgage company. What that means is that um, they, uh, sorry, uh, they provide halal financing for homes. Um, Watch the video, um, and especially if your mom and dad are watching, if they're not in the room, you can invite them in the room so that way they can see it. Let's play it. Assalamu alaikum. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam companion, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anh, is quoted by Imam al-Ghazali as saying, You are today in an age in which desires follow knowledge, and there will come an age in which knowledge follows desires. The age he predicted is the age we are living in today. It is the same philosophy when others within the Abrahamic faith began to ignore divine knowledge to incorporate usury or riba into our daily lives. The modification of the strict prohibition on usury or riba on which all three Abrahamic faith agreed upon was first introduced in the 15th century by European monarchs. In their desire to finance their wars, the European monarchs deliberately changed the word usury to interest. 
in order to permit money lending at interest as a means to finance their endless wars. This ushered in the modern financial system, where interest became acceptable and disassociated from the term usury or riba. For the past 20 years, Guidance Residential has proudly held to the principles of the Muslim faith to help American Muslims avoid the sinful practice of riba. This is why we are not a bank, nor a subsidiary of a bank. With more than 10 billion in Islamic home financing provided to over 40,000 Muslim American families in 34 states, we take great pride in our contributions to the growth and development of our community. Guidance is not just a financial institution, we are a pillar in our community, giving back millions of dollars through sponsorships that align with our core values and principles. Our independence from banks has made us the most trustworthy institution with the most authentically structured Islamic home financing program. We invite you to join our mission of avoiding riba and building a true and authentic alternative to a riba-based financial system. By guiding Muslim Americans away from bank-backed financing schemes and toward the purest form of musharaka in the U.S., we can build a more equitable and fair society to the benefit of all faith. We are Guidance Residential, the number one U.S. Islamic home financing provider. And subhanAllah, we're really thankful for them because because of their support, we're able to do some of the work that we're doing. So Jazakumullah khairan for them. I'm going to go back to uh, Imam Mustafa and Kari Noman. All right, you guys. What do you think? Kari Noman, do you have a winner? For me... I'm going to go with number three, Dawood. Number three, Dawood from Arizona. Imam Mustafa, is this a unanimous decision or did you have another uh, person? Uh, I'm going to say Dawood. That was my choice before uh, Qari Noman uh, chose him. Uh, the first Qari has to work on, uh, uh, most importantly, his, his breath. He, he was out of breath all the time because he didn't, you know, fill two thirds of his lungs with air. And this is why he had to break the words to take a breath all the time. Uh, and it's easy to, to break up the, the verses when you see the stop signs at the top. So maybe he can take his time, inshallah, to go through them. And the second Qari was, was, was in, a, in a rush. He made me feel like he was about to miss his, his flight. Yeah, so take your time, inshallah. <laughs> so the word is the winner. Mashallah. Well, Dawood from Arizona, congratulations, buddy. We're going to be contacting you. And, you know, mashallah, 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 congratulations. And look, for all of our kids, six and younger, Dawood, you have set a role model for us. And I hope that in our community, we'll have more six-year-olds next year who will be able to participate and, and who are even younger uh, who are able to participate. So, okay, with that said, now we're going to transition to our next category. This is a scholars category. I have to tell you, the competition heats up big time, okay? If you thought juniors was good, scholars is going to blow you away. We had over 280 submissions, 280 submissions in, or sorry, 90 submissions in this category. We asked these students to recite uh, the 155th through 157th verses of Surah Al-Baqarah. Um, I will ask you again, Kari Noman, if you can do us the pleasure of reciting this for us. And Imam Musafal will ask you for some um, uh, thoughts on these verses before we hear the students. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajeem, bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Wa lanabalu wannakum bi shay'in min al-khawf wal ju'i wa naqsin min al-amwal wa naqsin min al-amwal wal anfus wal thamarat wa bashir as-sabirin alladhina idha asabatuhum musibah قالوا إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون أولئك عليهم صلوات من ربهم ورحمة وأولئك هم المهتدون ما شاء الله ما شاء الله 
Imam Mustafa, tell us a little bit about these verses and why they are special. So basically these powerful verses teach us that being tested is part of living here in this world. Uh, this is not Jannah. And everyone is tested in a different way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lists uh, different types of tests in this life. So some people are tested in their health. Some people are tested in their wealth. Some people are tested in losing a beloved one. So everyone is tested in a different way. And people react in different ways. So some people protest and they question Allah. Why, why me? Why are you doing this to me? And some people are accepting and they are grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they are the ones who will gain Allah's blessings. And subhanAllah, especially now with the situation in, uh, in Palestine, a lot of non-Muslims uh, turn to the Quran to see, you know, why is this resilience and endurance of the Palestinian people? And I've seen a lot of them recite these particular ayat and they start to cry because they say, now we understand. Now we understand. It is the faith of the Palestinians that keeps them going and keeps them patient and resilient and steadfast. Alhamdulillah. Jazakumullah khairan. I'm so happy you shared that. And that's, that's exactly why we picked this verse for the times that we're in right now. And we see the challenges that many people across the world, especially our brothers and sisters in Gaza. And through these verses, we remember that, subhanAllah, all of us are going to go through hardship. And inshallah, uh, when we do, well, when we do go through those hardships, inshallah, we remember that we are from Allah, to Him we shall return. And with that, we will get the blessings of Allah. Okay, so with that said, uh, our first individual is Sister Hana Musa. Assalamu alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Hana and I am from Egypt. I live in North Carolina. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولا نبلونكم بشيء من الخوف والجوع والجوع ونقص من الأموال والأنفس والأنفس والثمرات وبشر الصابرين الذين إذا أصابتهم مصيبة قالوا قالوا إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون أولئك عليهم صلوات من ربهم ورحمة وأولئك هم المهتدون صدق الله العظيم I hope you liked my reciting والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته MashaAllah, Sister Hana. So now Hana is from Egypt. Imam Mustafa is also from Egypt. Imam, I'll ask you to give commentary on this one. What did you like? Where do you think she could improve? Uh, her recitation is fantastic. She follows the style of uh, Sheikh Al Husari. The makharij are very good, mashallah. And even when she chose to stop in the middle of the second ayah, she, ch she chose to stop at the verb, which is the perfect uh, place because she's going to only repeat the verb and continue. She doesn't have to repeat like three, four words. So, mashallah, the qara is good. The voice is good. The makharij are excellent. Uh, work on taking the breath. Uh, you feel one third. What she's doing is she filled one third of, of her lungs with air. Uh, she can do more. She can fill up two thirds of, of, of the lungs. Because if you feel all like the three thirds, then the air is pressured to come out. You are going to lose the breath anyway. So take two thirds. And this will help you finish the ayah or a big portion of it, inshallah. So what I'm hearing you say, Imam Mustafa, right? So like I've got my, my lungs. If I just take a small breath in and I start reciting, then I'm going to have to take a breath very soon. And then if yeah. I take a super big breath, well, then I'm going to have to start talking soon too because there's too much. Instead, sure. I should try to do two thirds of it filled with air and then with that yes. begin to recite. Yes. 
the big so car is do this technique mashallah that's why that's why we have you imam mustafa we have the big car is with us tonight mashallah alhamdulillah okay let's go to the video number two Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Maryam, I'm from Egypt, and today I will be recording from Canada. I will be reading um, Surah Al-Baqarah from Ayah 155 to Ayah 157. I hope you like my reading. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْصٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ أولئك عليهم صلوات صلوات من ربهم ورحمة وأولئك هم المهتدون صدق الله العظيم. I hope you like my reading and السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. ما شاء الله sister Maryam from Egypt. Kari Noman, what are your reactions to this recitation what did you like and where do you think she could improve so when you said this is going to be a tough round i can already see it um these are amazing reciters and with sister mariam i think she conveyed the verses in the most beautiful tone to emphasize the meaning of the verses they're very you know they're verses that are very somber, that have this meaning of like patience. And the way she recited it conveys that beautiful meaning. Um, I will say that there were some mistakes with Tajweed, and I think there, you know, some work that she can do there. I also think that in some places she started to go fast, and that's where she started to make those Tajweed mistakes. So very similar tips, slow down a little bit, and be mindful of the Tajweed rules as you're reciting. But overall, a b beautiful and touching recitation. Now, um, Gari Noman, you have a background in the 10 different recitation styles that are um, said to be authentic. And from what I understand, um, a big part of those recitation styles have to do with the emotions of the verses that are being conveyed. Is that is that right? And this idea of, hey, as we're reading the Qur'an, it's being thoughtful about, you know, what we're actually saying and, and then influencing how we recite it. Well, there are two different sciences, and I don't want to get too technical, but one is the science of the Qira'at, which is sort of the, the variations of the recitation when it comes to some pronunciation of words that will change. And then there's a science of maqamat, which is a science of, you know, how to apply certain tunes to the recitation mm. to create a greater emphasis on the meaning. So I am not a master in maqamat. I am mm. not even a master in qira'at, but I did study the, varia the variations and the different variants of the recitation of the Qur'an. But there are two sciences, and these are very beautiful sciences that we see many of the Qur'an from around the world implement in their recitation. That's why it's extremely powerful and moving when you, when you hear them and listen to them. Jazakumullah khairan. Thank you so much. Okay, so now we're going to go to the final uh, one. This is uh, uh, Mahdi. Um, yeah, okay. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Mahdi, and today I'm going to be reading Surah Baqarah, Ayah 155 to 157. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <laughs> وَلَنَبَلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْصٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ 
والذين إذا أصابتهم مصيبة قالوا إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون أولئك عليهم صلوات من ربهم ورحمة وأولئك هم المهتدون Okay, Imam Mustafa, what is your thoughts, feedbacks, and reaction to uh, Brother Mahdi? Yeah, mashallah, Mahdi's Qur'an is very uh, heartfelt. You feel like he's putting his emotions in, in the Qur'an and mashallah, he feels what he is reciting. So I, I kind of like his, his recitation, mashallah. And I wish he could like raise his voice a little bit and, you know, be more confident. This is what I would say. Just like Maryam. Maryam was very confident, even though she made several, you know, uh, tajweed, uh, full, uh, not not mistakes, but uh, small issues here and there, but she was very confident. How, how does someone build confidence, Imam Mustafa? Well, number one, from practice. When you keep reciting the Quran and you say it with your family, your friends, you lead Salah, then you gain confidence. Uh, I know when people first uh, start re re leading prayers at, in mosques, uh, sometimes they are, you know, they are uh, nervous. And two pieces of advice that I would give them to make it easy for them. Number one, choose easy ayat or an easy surah. Because sometimes when we introduce someone, and I have seen this so many times, you introduce someone to lead the prayers, and they aim for the most difficult ayat in the book, and they stumble and they pass out. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so take it easy, bro. Take it easy. Choose an easy surah that you can do it confidently. Alhamdulillah. Um, and number two, uh, you know that you are taking the place of the Prophet ﷺ, the Imam leading the community. So start small, then you will grow bigger over the time, inshallah. So you start with your family, then friends, then you lead the community, inshallah. Don't start with a, a, a masjid with uh, 500 people. Start small, then grow over time, inshallah. We lead it and lead the prayer in your own home if, if you do pray in your home. Um, subhanallah. Okay, so I'm going to let uh, the two of you think about the winner. While you think about that winner, we're going to play a quick video from Noor Kids. Uh, and actually, I think Mr. Amin might be in this video. I'm not sure. Let's, let's take a view. It'll come soon. I... Can't hear anything. Where is a banana? Where is Allah? What am I going to do? What am I going to say? I don't know what to tell her. Hey, relax. We've got a book for that. Wow, very nice. The graphics are amazing. She also asked me, how do we know if there is a hereafter? Well, we've got a book for that too. Now. I also wondered, I mean, she wondered, why do we pray? That's a great question. We've got a book for that too. Allahu Akbar, how many books do you have? We have over 200 stories in the character building program. 200? Are, who are you people? I'm so glad you asked. We're Noor Kids. For the last 10 years, we've given Muslim families a helping hand in raising children with Islamic values. I feel like it's very important, especially for Muslim kids, to be able to have something in front of them that teaches them the morals and values that we want them to have as they grow older. Each month, children receive a new graphic novel in the mail. They actually all try to jump in the mailbox whenever the week comes. But you know, you tell your kids things, but when they hear it outside, it's different. And that's what Noor Kids brings into my home every single month. It's an opportunity to reinforce learn behavior and hear it a different way that can make them think, mm, maybe I could do it this way. These books follow the journey of our four characters, Amin, Shirin, Asad, and Amira, 
as they go on fun and relatable adventures. Each book comes with a badge that kids collect in their Global Muslim Citizenship Passport. Nor Kids is more than just kids' books. We use an evidence-based curriculum and pedagogy developed at Harvard University using 36 themes related to Islamic character, beliefs, and citizenship designed to help children learn about Islam in a fun and an effective way. Nana! Nana! Oh! It was a dream. But Nana, where is Allah? We have a book for that. Yay! Asad prepares a science fair presentation. We have a book for that, mashallah. All right, uh, yes, Noor Kids, that's me. Um, and hey, if you guys are part of Noor Kids, alhamdulillah, if you're not part of Noor Kids, this is your um, reminder to consider joining so that way you can benefit and also so we can get your support. Um, so with that said, let's go back to Imam Mustafa and Qari no Imam. I'm gonna go to you first, Imam Mustafa. We had two Egyptians, okay? Now, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran that we have to be equitable, you know, even if it's with our own family, subhanAllah. But regardless, Imam Musafa, who did you pick? Well, first of all, I like how you uh, did the grandpa uh, acting <laughs> oh, part that, in, the, in the video. That wasn't, Marshall, that wasn't me. That was, no, there's Mr. Amin. He's, he lives in the treehouse, not me. Different guy. He looks similar, not as handsome, but uh, different guy. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so please, yeah. It's very, very convincing, mashallah. <laughs> so it, it's going to be a tough competition here because, mashallah, they're all good. Uh, Mahdi's Qara was heartfelt, as I said. Maryam was confident, and Hannah was professional. This is how I felt. So personally, I would give it to Hannah, inshallah. Kari Noman? I also gave it to Hannah. I Subhanallah, think, um... Subhanallah, unanimous, unanimous. Allahu Ishmael. Akbar, Ishmael. la ilaha illallah. <laughs> Hannah, congratulations, my dear. We will be emailing you to send you a cash prize. And more than anything, we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps you on this journey to become a reciter of the Qur'an and that all of us who are watching take you as a role model. Now, we have saved the absolute best for last. This is the professor's category, okay? And this is our final category. This is for students ages 11 and up. We actually had... Um, also, about 290 entrants for this category, subhanAllah. So, quite a few people had, uh, um, had submitted. Again, we're going to do the three. This time, I will ask, because, you know, people might be thinking, you know, I'm only asking Kari Noman to recite. We want to listen to Imam Mustafa's beautiful voice, especially with the two-thirds and the three-thirds, you know. So, uh, <laughs> no, I'm joking, but... Uh, Imam Mustafa, will you do us the favor of uh, reciting this uh, beautiful ayah of the Quran? Inshallah. <laughs> له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء وسع كرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يؤده حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم ما شاء الله جزاكم الله خيرا كاري نومان tell us a little bit about this verse of the Quran and why it is so um, important well, this ayah here is an ayah that speaks about the beautiful traits and characteristics of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It talks about his might and his knowledge. But one of the beautiful things about this verse is that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa taught us to recite this verse multiple times during our day. In one hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that the person who recites this ayat al-kursi after every prayer, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were to invite them back to Allah, 
then there would be nothing between them and Jannah. That Allah will give you straight access to paradise if you make a habit of reciting Ayatul Kursi after every prayer. In one hadith, the Prophet ﷺ says that the one who recites Ayatul Kursi at night, Allah sends an angel to your room and that angel will protect you until the morning. And then when you recite Ayatul Kursi in the morning, then there will be an angel that will protect you until the evening. So this Ayatul Kursi is such a powerful verse, but also a very important dua that we should all try to memorize and recite every single day, inshallah. MashaAllah. Jazakumullah khairan, uh, Kari Noman. And um, for the people who are watching, these last three are, they represent the best of the best. I'm very excited for you guys to um, listen to them. I know, by the way, um, there's many of you who participated and are not here. Or maybe your journey with the Qur'an is just starting. We are going to be giving a gift to every single student based off of their work for the rest of Ramadan, and I'll be talking about it at the end of the program, okay? All right, so with that said, let us listen to our uh, first uh, reciter and what's up, nerd kids? I'm Summer Al Sayed, and I'm going to be reciting Ayat al Kursi. Let's get on with it. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajim. Bismillahi r-Rahmani r-Rahim. Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al hayyu al qayyum. لا تأخذ سنة ولا نوم له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء وسع كرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يؤده حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم جزاكم الله خيرا for watching and السلام عليكم I don't think we can hear you, Brother Amin. Hey, uh, Kari Noman, what do you think? What, what did you like? Where is the area for opportunity? So, I think the tune was beautiful. I think, mashallah, she read with a passion. There were some tajweed mistakes. And again, this requires just maybe looking at the verses as you're reading just to ensure that you're not missing anything. I know Ayatul Kursi sometimes are, is a verse that we already know. So we, we become overly confident and we then start making mistakes. So this is another problem. One is being confident and sometimes being overly confident leads us to not looking in the Mus'haf, which may lead us to making some mistakes. But otherwise, overall, beautiful recitation, beautiful tune, slight uh, adjustments that need to be made but I look forward to seeing her inshallah soon as one of the great qadiyas of, of our country inshallah okay we're going to go to the next contestant assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh my name is Sabreen and I'm from Texas today I'll be reciting Surah Al-Baqarah Ayah 255 also known as Ayat Al-Kursi أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم لا تأخذ سنة ولا نوم له ما في السماء وما في الأرض من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم 
ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء وسع كرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يؤذه حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم ما شاء الله إمام مصطفى um, tell us what uh, what do you think she did a good job of and where do you think that Sister Sabrine could improve? I like the graphics in the background like the stars and the planets. I know it's, she is uh, in Texas and they have NASA there I believe so it's very uh, uh, very relevant. Uh, her Quran is very good mashallah. I like the tone and the mode of her recitation. It's, it's very professional and very very uh, heart touching uh, there is one uh, particular issue of uh, tajweed which is the dot if you have the dot at the end of the uh, ayah where you stop if it has sukun uh, there is no qalqala there you don't say well ard you say well ard uh. because it's not one of the huruf of qalqala so you have to hold the dot well ard not well ard but other than that the qira is perfect mashallah Got it. Perfect. Okay, um, we're going to go to our final contestant, Sister Zakia S. Assalamu alaikum, my kids. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Full screen on me. Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al hayyu al qayyum. La ta'khuduhu sinatun wa la nawm. Lahu ma fi al samawati wa ma fi al ard. Man dha alladhi yashfa'u indahu illa bi'idhnih Ya'lamu ma bayna aydihim wa ma khalfahum Wa la yuhitun bi shay'im min ilmihi illa bima sha'a Wasi'a kursiyuhu al-samawati wal-ard ولا يؤده حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم صدق الله العظيم السلام عليكم ما شاء الله سيستر زكية اوكي كاري نومان كومنتري عن هذا وماذا تحبه؟ وماذا تحبه؟ وماذا تحبه؟ وماذا تحبه؟ وماذا تحبه؟ وماذا تحبه؟ كاري نومان there we go there we go so um it's really hard for me to find any criticism of this one. Um, I will say that it was such a beautiful recitation, natural tune. Um, it felt very, um, you know, sort of it flowed very well. The Tajweed, I believe, was on point. Um, overall, I think this was just a phenomenal recitation, mashallah. Mashallah. Okay, so now I'm going to let the two of you um, think about who the last and final winner is specifically for this. And while you are thinking about it, we are bringing on a gentleman, Brother Hassan, uh, who is going to share a couple of words. Like I mentioned, Guidance is sponsoring the program tonight. And so today they wanted to just share a few words with us uh, on what this means to them and also um, a little bit more about their organization. Um, while Jake is doing that and bringing him up, I want to just share on a personal level, there's been three different moments today that I like cried a little bit. And the reason why I did is because the reason why we created this Ramadan camp in Nora Kids is I wanted it to be basically everything that I didn't have when I was a kid. When I was a kid, reading the Quran it was something that like my mom and dad told me to do. It wasn't something that in my bottom of my heart I something I really wanted to. And today, as we heard from Summer and Sabrine and Zakia and everyone who's recited, even me as an old man, I think I want to recite the Qur'an more. And I imagine for many of you boys and girls, as you're listening today, you're thinking, gosh, I want my recitation of the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be so beautiful. 
And if that's how you're feeling, then that was our mission and mission accomplished. And I just genuinely thank Allah for giving us this opportunity because during this month of Ramadan, this month of the Qur'an, um, I give genuine things to Allah and for Kari Oman and Imam Mustafa who are here who are helping us because this has really been such a delight. I think we've got Brother Hussam here. Assalamu alaikum, Brother Hussam. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Brother Amin. Now, um, the pleasure is all mine. I know you had a few words you wanted to share with our audience yes. today. Well, first, Ramadan Kareem to everyone. Again, my name is Hussam Qutb, and I represent a Muslim-owned company called Guidance Residential. Um, we help Muslim Americans buy homes through an Islamic method called Musharaka, or partnership. And as newer kids likes to say, this is a method that is Sheikh approved. Now, as Muslims, we make choices every day to ensure our actions are halal, from eating halal food to our interactions with each other, even our purchases and our business transactions. Living halal is about making choices that align with our faith. So when it comes to the biggest purchase we'll ever make, buying a home is up there. We must turn to our Islamic values to guide us. Now a home represents shelter, safety, and family. It's where many of our memories are created, including those of Ramadan and the countless iftars and prayers we engage in. But when we're planning to buy our home, our choices shouldn't just be about the type of house we want to buy or its location. It should also involve how we go about buying it, ensuring the process is halal. You see, at our company, our sole purpose is to help grown-ups buy their homes in a way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, buying a house is a really big deal, and most people can't afford to pay for a house all at once. So for many years, Muslims had to borrow money to buy their houses. And borrowing money from banks or riba banks that charge interest creates more riba. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran that we must avoid riba. In Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah says that trade, which is, tra which is charging money for something of value, is halal. But riba, which is borrowing money at interest, is haram. Riba is not a minor injustice. It is a major injustice. And that's why we launched our company 22 years ago with the help and approval of seven super scholars in Islamic finance. We spent three years developing a co-ownership program, a musharaka program that helps Muslims buy a house without borrowing money. And here's the best part. Through our program, we buy the house together by sharing in the cost of the house and then selling our share to those families over time. Imagine if you had to save up all your allowance for years and years just to buy one toy. That would take forever, right? So our company makes it possible for Muslims to buy their dream home without waiting forever and most importantly, without paying riba. So next time you see your parents excited about looking at houses or homes, remember that an Islamic home financing company, Guidance, may be helping them turn their dream home into a reality. And who knows, maybe one day you'll get to help them pick out that perfect yard for a tree house or maybe even a swimming pool. So I want to just um, thank uh, Noor Kids for having us on the show today. And mashallah for all of the young bodies. Um, uh, this has just been a treat as well for me, brother. I mean, sitting here watching them. So um, thank you again for listening and thank you for having us on. Hey, the pleasure is all mine, brother Hassan. Thank you so much for joining us and sharing those uh, wonderful words. Um, and I know I just learned a whole bunch. And so I hope that you guys did too. Jazakumullah khairan. Um, I'm going to go to our... Yes, Imam Mustafa Khattab and Kari Noman Hussein for this last and final decision. Uh, will it be unanimous? Will it not be unanimous? Who will be the winner this time around? Now, um, 
I'm going to go to Kari Noman for you first. Who do you think, uh, in your opinion, is the winner of our professors category? This was a tough race. This was a tough competition. Um, but if I have to, if you really are making me choose one, then I have to go with Sister Zakia. Okay, we have Sister Zakia and Imam Mustafa Khattab, the translator of the Clear Quran, which now also has a podcast. It has volumes one, two, three, potentially four. I, I think I have four different books. There's a blue one, there's a purple one. I'm colorblind. I think there's a green one, there's a red one. Um, is there a color that I'm missing? So blue, green, orange, and purple. Okay, so I got them all. Okay, subhanAllah. And I, I, I like. You guys, I am not joking with you. I am an old man. I Again, actually, my, my prefer, my, even as an adult, I prefer to read the kids' clear Quran. I'm not even joking. I seriously prefer, because the amount of stories and discussions that are built into it, it is amazing. Anyways, okay, Imam, who is the winner in your opinion? Well, as uh, Qari Dalman said, it's a tough competition and they are very close. Uh, and I was about to pray Istikhara. Then I started to lean towards uh, Sister Zakia. MashaAllah, she's very professional. So it goes to Zakia, inshallah. Subhanallah, Sister Zakia. All three of our decisions were unanimous. We actually didn't, we thought that there could have been some split decisions. But subhanAllah, Sister Zakia, you are our winner. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and your mom and your dad and your family for helping you on this journey and also for all of our contestants. Now, um, I want to share that we are going to be giving a special gift to everyone for the whole month of Ramadan, inshallah. But before I share that, I want to just, you know, as we're ending the program, Kari Noman, we have a group of wonderful young Muslims who are watching. Do you have any advice for them? You know, for all of you who participated, for those of you who are not able to participate and are watching and have this desire in your heart to want to be a better reciter, know that you can achieve it and you can accomplish it. I was in your shoes not too long ago. I was someone who didn't know how to recite very well. I was someone who participated in Quran competitions like you are right now. And I grew over time. But I, because of the efforts of my parents, and my teachers was able to continue to go at it, continue to push, continue to make an effort. And Alhamdulillah, Allah has blessed me with the greatest of blessings, and that is to be able to recite the Quran. And I hope that the recitation of the Quran is one that Allah is pleased with. So I don't want any of you to ever give up. It doesn't matter what you think of your voice. It doesn't matter what you think of your reading. If there's a will, there is a way. If you practice, it will become perfect, inshallah. May Allah bless you all and make you from the, the memorizers of the Quran. And remember, if you can't memorize the whole Quran, even starting slowly to memorize a verse here and a verse there, inshallah, because of that effort, Allah will give you the reward of a hafiz on the day of judgment. Continue to work towards that goal and never give up, inshallah. Masha'Allah. Jazakumullah khairan. Imam Mustafa, any final advice for our students? Well, uh, I have a message for uh, the uh, the contestants, the Qaris who uh, won the uh, the prizes. That, uh, Masha'Allah, I'm very proud of you, especially Zakiya and Hannah. Uh, your Qara'a today is much better than mine when I was your age. I'm, I'm being honest with you. Alhamdulillah. And those who didn't win the prizes, you didn't actually lose. You took a step closer to winning bigger prizes in the future, inshallah. So don't give up. Keep trying and eventually you will make it, inshallah. You guys uh, have done a wonderful job and you have um, a great potential, inshallah, to achieve a lot of good things in life. Jazakallah khair. MashaAllah, JazakumAllah khairan. So look, here's the thing. If you're watching this and you're thinking to yourself, you know, I want to build a stronger relationship with the Qur'an. The truth is, you are no different than me because that's exactly how I feel right now. So we want to give a reward for every single family and every single child who is watching right now. On my screen right now is 
uh, available at norkids.com slash Quran calendar. It's also available in our academy.norkids.com community. What it is, is it's a Ramadan calendar where every single day you are able to record three things. Uh, whether you do a full day or a half day fast, whether you perform charity, or whether you read Quran. For the rest of Ramadan, because we know everyone's of different age groups, what we care about the most is Quran, okay? And today is the 11th day. So if you print this out right now, or ask your parents to, it's in black and white, and if you spend 15 minutes every day between now and the rest of Ramadan, and you fill in this, uh, in this calendar and you send it to me, this is my email address right here, each person who participates will be getting a award. And the truth is, this is the month of Ramadan. This whole week we've been talking about this wonderful Quran that we have. And I want to thank you all for joining us because this was such a treat. Now, tomorrow is our game show night, but there's a twist. We are going to be doing our biggest giveaway in Noor Kids history tomorrow. But you have to join. I can't wait to see you there. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Goodbye, everyone.